Well, Australia's always battled really for a huge support in Adelaide when we've been there. But moving to the Gold Coast, I understand it's going to be massive. It's going to be not too dissimilar to, to the Dubai, to New Zealand tournament, to the Hong Kong tournament. So it's going to be a big change and you can see a, a really good Australian performance, I guarantee it. So it's how all our athletes prepare for this very first tournament because it's going to be a goodie and uh, playing it on the Gold Coast is going to be quite special. Yeah, I've been to Japan many times uh, during, you know, its sevens and uh, it'll be tough because um, even Japan, on their day, can compete with any team. We've even seen them improve in the 15s and have a, a pretty good World Cup, even though they never won a game. They, they're certainly out there challenging all the time. And, and sevens rugby, there's going to be a lot of emphasis, certainly within Asia. And Japan's no different. That They'll put a lot of emphasis on doing well in their own tournament. They're always a tough team to beat. They're good on their feet. It's the ideal game for Japan, and they'll do it pretty well. They're pretty professional, and uh, no doubt when we get there, it'll be a tough tournament to win. Fiji is probably the team that I, I look at the most because I believe they've got more players than anywhere in the world to select from, more depth. They play the game every weekend over in Fiji. They're always conditioned, they're always a threat, they're always pretty good. And even in Samoa, any of the teams on the islands, Pacific Islands, are always tough. But um, again, you know, you've got, you know, South Africa. You've got even in England now, they've got their own series also in that part of the world in the Northern Hemisphere. So you, you don't know until the first tournament and what they're going to bring. And even in England, they, I think they contract 12 players now to play sevens rugby. So they'll be tough. First involved, certainly in the beginning of the, of the series. And, uh, you know, we've won nine series now. But it was generally New Zealand, Fiji. Then at the odd tournament, you'd have England. And Australia would throw out the odd good one, Samar as well. But generally, it was always New Zealand, Fiji. And... Um, but what I've seen now, because players have gone out and got conditioned, and we used to be right ahead of the opposition because of our fitness levels, they've got, out, got an understanding of how we play the game, and now you've got six or seven teams. After doing it, certainly, a lot of, they do a lot of video work, a lot of analysis on all the teams, on all the players with the X factors, the players that can actually be the game breakers, you're looking to shut them down. So it's become a very level field now in terms of where we're at, and, uh, and I don't think a lot of people out there realise how hard it is to actually win a tournament now. And six or seven teams out there, and we've seen the USA in a final, we've seen uh, also Kenya in a final, you know, so that says it all. Hong Kong, of course, um, I played in Hong Kong as a player, you know, way back in 83. I won my first ever tournament coaching the New Zealand team in Hong Kong in 94. Five and six, so you're winning three Hong Kong titles when you had players like Cullen and Lomu coming through in Glen Osborne, and I'll never forget that. And so, Hong Kong, I suppose, you know, with, with Dubai, um, probably um, very, very close, but possibly Hong Kong, I would say, definitely because of that, just what it brings. And it's, it is the it's where Sevens really started, it used to be one tournament, and now we've got eight, nine tournaments on the World Series. So, you know, certainly, Hong Kong for its uh, just the way that. Um, it brings everyone from different parts of the world and uh, it's a supporting tournament. I love working with the New Zealand Sevens team because uh, coaching any national side, and although there's pressure, you're also operating with the best players in the game and uh, a lot of youngsters providing them with a pathway you know, to go on to become an All Black, you know, Super Rugby. And I think 36 players have come through my team since coaching them from 1994 which has been pleasing from my aspect, and uh, to see them go on and play for the All Blacks even at this current walkout. The proudest moment really, I suppose, has been four moments, and those winning four Commonwealth Games gold medals. You know, doing it in Kuala Lumpur in 98, Manchester in 2002, Melbourne 2006, and just recently in Delhi. You know, to me, uh, seeing your, you know, the, um, the fern, Sorry, you know, the players being presented with their gold medal, the listening of the anthem, the raising of the flag, there's nothing better than that. And, and in terms of my career, that's been most memorable for me. You've got to be, a, you know, got to be someone that gets on with the players. You've got to have some great people skills. You've got to get respect. You get that respect. Then the players will go out and they'll play for you. I think that's really paramount. It's not so much technical, tactical. It's first getting them on your side, building trust you know, having faith in, in your players and they've got faith in you and it's the start and that's really important from my perspective is, is about having great people skills. Sevens rugby now in terms of it's got to be an entertainment. People are going dressed up, 
this saying in New Zealand or Hong Kong is, is when you get bored, you turn around and start watching the rugby, you know? And that's what it's all about. But you get the big games, you get massive England supporters, depending on what tournament you're at. You get a lot of Kiwis, you get, you know, I'm amazed when you go to the US, for instance, and you see the number of Kenyans, the number of Fijians, the number of Samoans support there is just huge. And they're turning up from anywhere and everywhere, and it's, it's massive. I mean, I remember playing in, in the States only a couple of years ago in Vegas. We played the semi final against Fiji, and it was like you were playing in Fiji. There was just so many supporters there. We played Kenya in the quarterfinal. It was like you're playing Kenya in Kenya. It's amazing. So, and that's what you're going to get. And uh, and that's why seven, it's the beauty of sevens now. Not only dressing up, but, but it's also how competitive the game is now in any game. There's no easy game in the game of sevens now. You know, I've been to four Commonwealth Games now, and um, and obviously it's memorable. I mean, it's great mixing with all the best athletes in the world of different respective sports. Yet you're representing the sport of rugby, and the pinnacle for my position is is going to the Olympics, and that for the sport is just simply magnificent. Any younger player now coming through secondary school could, when you're looking ahead to 2016 in Rio, could play, be playing for their country at the Olympics and what a dream that would be and uh, that I think, believe it, is, uh, I, I certainly believe anyway, is, is just a magnificent step for Sevens Rugby to, to be admitted to the Olympics and that sport I certainly believe will stay on to, to 2020 as well. It's a massive challenge having three in a row. I mean it hasn't been done before. I mean sometimes when you look at the injury rate after after two tournaments, you know, we looked at it last year, there were so many injuries, we thought, what if we were going to a third tournament now? We wouldn't be possible. So we, the IRB have looked at ways to certainly, hopefully, assist that by giving us five subs in any game that we play, we can use all our substitutes. So that may help to a degree, but it's, um, it's going to be a real test, you know, mentally and physically on the players, but a, a real challenge. And... Uh, I've always said to do good at the World Series, you've got to do well in the first two tournaments. Well, this year it's going to be doing well in the first three tournaments. I'd like Jose Gere. He's just a massive threat when he played my side in Delhi. Hasn't never been able to play a lot of the game of sevens, but um, he, he loves the game and deserves so big, powerful, fast. It's a massive, massive uh, strike power to have, certainly in your side. Defence and sevens is massive now, mainly because it's one on one. You have a lot more responsibilities sitting on a sevens field. You know, once you miss a tackle, I mean, it just opens up in the game of sevens, particularly when you're up against players that are very good on their feet. They're very, very quick. So that's what the importance is. Good defence wins your tournaments, and if your defence is working for any side in sevens rugby, attack generally takes care of itself. We take a lot of pride in our defence and it wins your tournaments, you know. A big part of defence, and, and if it works, is, a, is your communication also. It's about having seven captains on the field because uh, it's so, so important. Certainly when you're playing in the biggest stadiums where you've got 50,000 people just screaming. I always look for a captain to lead from the front. I had DJ Forbes, of course, um, for the last two or three seasons. He's a, he's a player that leads by his actions. He's got Tomasi Thama that's providing all the decisions on the field. But DJ, the way he plays, the way he leads, he's so inspirational, commands a lot of respect, and his actions are second to none for someone that certainly puts his body on the line every time he plays for me. We build a lot of our, our team camaraderie really based around working for each other, and it's how hard I train the players. I believe that unifies them, it makes them very, very close. And uh, they've got to, you know, basically, to, uh, adhere to a lot of protocols that we set within our system. They've got to make sacrifices nutritionally to get the best out of them physically. And, and when, we, when I work them really hard, because all my trainings are harder than any game they'll ever play, and that generally unifies them, makes them very, very close, and that to me is a, is a key ingredient. It's a tough question because it's ended with do you need a forward or do you need a back? I, I found in South Africa, I thought he played very, very well. He's someone that you could fit into your side. He's he, as small as he is, he's aggressive in the tackle. He's very, very good when it comes to confrontation. And he's a very smart footballer as well. Yeah, someone that would also be a problem as he is for us when we play against them, as he would be for other teams. The quickest player was Marika Vunabaka playing for Fiji. He was just outstandingly quick, frightening quick, and someone that could score, score tries from anywhere. Fortunately, 
well, unfortunately for Fiji, though, he went on to Super Rugby, got him to too many weights, and he lost a lot of that pace. But when he was at his best, and they won a World Cup many years back in sevens, he was just simply, simply quite uh, lightning and uh, just really scary when you certainly played Fiji. One of the most skillful players that ever played when he was at his very best was Amosio Valentinoma. Uh, as a 17 year old he played for New Zealand, he's won three gold medals. You know, he's an outstanding player. The way Sali Sarevi of New Zealand sevens I found, but his knowledge of the game, his understanding, reading two, three, four phases ahead, just made him stand out above anyone else. And at his very, very best when he was really fit, he was very, very hard to handle. Fitness has won me tournaments, no question. In those last one or two minutes when you need to, to score some big points to win tournaments, it's happened and I generally I look back and I think it was because my team was so, so fit. We won seven tournaments in a row two or three years back which was quite magnificent really and I luckily I had no injuries and at seven players I played about every minute of every game and every one of them were in the level 14s in a bleep test which was outstandingly fit and lucky to get through with no injuries and they could play every minute of every game and, and to me that really proved the point of, of the fitness levels being where they should be at.